Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are going to take a look at the three heroes from the latest banner. It includes three new units from Genealogy of the Holy War game. I'll be going over their default skill sets, stats, and give you guys my opinion on each of them. And at the very end, I'll give you guys my personal ranking from best to worst. Uh, the last review ran a little bit too long for my liking, so I will try my best to make this one more concise and shorter. First hero is the star of the banner. I've been told I shouldn't say his name or else I'll get bing bonged by YouTube, so I'll just call him Sager. At max level, his stats are 41 HP, 35 attack, 32 speed, 34 defense, 17 res, and has 159 BST. So this guy has the best stats for a red cavalier at the moment. He also has four more BST than the next red cap so he's going to score slightly higher in arena compared with the others. Stat wise offensively he should be top two among the red cavaliers. I think the other competition he has is Brave Roy. Brave Roy has three less attack but two more speed than Sager. Roy also has Blazing Durandal which grants him an extra three attack and is a lot better than Divine Turfing for player face combat. After saying all that I believe Roy is still the better unit to use if you want to use a player phase red cavalier while Sager comes in a close second. In terms of survival there's no question that Sager Sagerd is the best at doing that. 34 defense is the same as Eldigan's and 3 less than Xander's. But Sagerd has 32 speed which is the same as Kane's and 2 less than Roy's. When you combine both of those stats together with his decent HP then I think it's safe to say that his physical bulkiness outmatches the rest. As for his resistance and magical bulk, well we'll talk about that in a little bit. Divine Tearfing is unique and has 16 might, it grants 3 res, if in combat against foe using magic, unit receives 50% less damage from the first attack. Ok so even though the effect says combat against foe using magic, this effect doesn't apply to dragons, only mages. So blue dragons like Naoi, Ninian, and Corrin are still great heroes to use against Sager. As we know, he has terrible resistance which is his worst stat, but the thing is his worst stat or resistance isn't so bad when you take Divine Tearfing's effect into account. If a mage with if the attack initiates on him, then he'll only take about 15 damage instead of 30. If the mage is able to double him, that's when his B skill Crusader Ward is taken into effect. Crusader's Ward effect says if unit receives consecutive attacks from a foe two spaces away, damage from second attack onward reduced by 80%. It's basically deflect missiles and magic 3 combined into one. Using that same example from a little bit ago, if the 50 attack mage attacks Sagard and doubles him, then Divine Tearfing has the first attack, reducing the damage down to 15 then the second hit which is supposed to deal a full 30 damage is now reduced by 80% which is about 6. Normally the mage will deal 60 total damage, Sagard only receives 21 or 35% of the total damage. Most of you guys probably want to know if he can survive Reinhardt. I did the math and I believe a minus resistance Sagard with neutral HP can survive the most powerful plus 10 merge Reinhardt with buffs and survive of exactly 1 HP. Special is Miracle, it's an interesting special on him, he is fairly tanky so he might have a lot of success on activating it, but at the end of the day what purpose does it really serve? It will just be more of an annoyance than anything on defensive teams. I'd swap it out for Bonfire or Ignis depending on the rest of your build. A skill is close defense 3, he's the second unit to have the skill now, first being Summer Tiki who is limited edition, this is a nice skill for his kit, he has all the skills to survive versus mages, close defense ensures that he survives versus physical lance and dragonstone heroes. Uh, this is a flexible skill slot. You can replace close defense with distant counter to one shot green and some red mages on the enemy phase. If you give Sager distant counter then the only hero that Crusader's Ward will have effect on are Desperation Heroes, Brave Archers, Allwyn, and Reinhardt. Speed Smoke 3 is a new C skill. Works exactly like Brave One's attack smoke but for speed. I actually pulled Sager from my free pull so I was able to play around with his kit a little bit. Speed Smoke actually works very well with the rest of his kit. The unit doesn't have to attack in order to activate these smoke skills, they only need to be in combat. Therefore, Speed Smoke will activate if Sager is attacked by a ranged enemy regardless if he can retaliate or not. That being said, it doesn't work too often when he is being initiated on by a melee enemy because the melee enemy is oftentimes is just too far away from the rest of his team. But if Sager is used to tank a ranged enemy, then it works a lot better. Great skill if you plan to use Sager on a normal team, otherwise you're probably going to swap this skill out for a horse buff. Sager has excellent stats for a cavalry unit, also flexible enough to be built many different ways. You can turn 
turn him into a supportive unit that can tank basically every unit besides blue dragonstone and hard hitting lance enemies. Or you can build him into a player phase offensive unit with skills like swiss sparrow or darting blow. He's kind of like a red frederick with 7 more speed so you can actually give him a brave source set but I personally want to do that. If a hero has a legendary weapon I think you should build around it. The best part about him is the fact that he comes out of the box basically fully built. Just give him reposition or swap and he's ready to go. As for key IVs his best boon is either attack or speed. I'd prefer more speed but attack is okay too. A change in defense doesn't really affect him too much. The best bane for him I think is resistance. Like I said earlier even a minus res Sagard is able to survive the strongest version of Reinhardt. It may lower his survivability versus other strong blue mages but I don't know why you would consider even tanking blue mages with him in the first place regardless if he survives or not. Minus HP is actually worse than minus resistance just because of how his default set operates but if he has minus HP then you can patch it up with a HP seal. Neutral IVs are good as well. All in all Sager is excellent to pull for especially if you're just starting out. I think people really overhyped and went overboard about his skill set. He'll be a bit annoying to kill off but it's not impossible to do with a few adjustments. The heroes that are broken are the ones that can one round KO 90% of the cast and not defend. Next is Tal Tiu, the only blue mage from the banner. Max stats are 39 HP, 32 attack, 35 speed, 17 defense, and 25 res. I won't take too much time going over her just because she's just another generic blue blade tone mage. She's very similar to Bunny Lucina and is just a worse Lind. She has the 4th highest speed and 4th highest attack among blue tone mages. She'll be just as good as Lucina, Mei, and Brashida. The best thing about Tal Tiu are her skills. She's going to drop down to 4 star rarity when this banner is over so she'll be great for fodder. She has Blar Blade and the the only other blue mage that comes with it on default is Odin. Her assist is rally speed resistance, another great skill for fodder. The dual rally skills cost the most SP in the assist slot which means it will score more points in arena than the other assist skills. I don't like speed and res together. I'd rather it be attack and speed or defense and res but you can give this to a hero with hone attack so they can boost an ally stat in 3 different departments. Attack and res 2 grants attack and res by 2, it's trash. C skill is drive speed 2. The other unit that has drive speed is Brave Lucina who you don't want to sack for obvious reasons. This is the best drive skill in the game because speed is just so important. Anyone can benefit off of this buff because it helps them on both sides of the map. It helps allies double and prevents enemies from doubling. So Tao to you should obviously be built as a generic blade tone mage because she comes with Blar Blade by default. Everybody else besides Odin requires 20,000 feathers. She's a great pickup for the really new players. I think at this point most of the veterans should have at least one blue mage nuke already whether it's Lin. Reinhardt, Owen, Corrin, or Delthea. You can either keep her and build her for Arena Salt or just simply use her as fodder for the various of great skills that she has. The key boon that she'll want is that speed. Attack is okay as well but they can get their increased attack from Blade Tone's effect which is why plus attack isn't as important as plus speed. I would say plus resistance is okay too if you want to build her as a Raven Tone Mage but I wouldn't recommend it. She's a great pickup but at the end of the day she's just another Blade Tone Mage. Last hero of the banner is Julia's mom and say Sager's Boo Boo, Deirdre. Uh, max stats are 36 HP, 33 attack, 28 speed, 16 defense, and 35 resistance. The obvious comparison is Julia. Deirdre has 2 less HP, 2 less attack, 1 less defense, 2 more speed, and 3 more resistance. Slightly less physical bulk, but more magical bulk. She's basically just as good as Julia. The stats are just so similar. She'll mostly be used as a bait and kill mage. The only thing that did stand out was the extra 2 speed. There's some times where I'll use Julia and run into green tone breaker Sonia. Sonia has base 31 speed while Julia has only 26 which means that if both heroes have green tone breaker equipped then Sonya is able to double Julia and kill her. So Deirdre's 28 speed is nice for that specific matchup. There's not much you can do with her stat spread. You're probably just going to give her a quicker post or a green tone breaker in the B slot with Fury or Triangle of Death in the A slot. Maybe distant defense or fortress resistance. Her weapon is Divine Naga, effective against dragons and nullifies active buffs during combat. Active buffs include Hone, Rally, Fortify, and etc. This effect is great for a couple of reasons. First it allows her to tank mages more safely. Buffs in this game add tons of damage to units and Divine Naga completely negates all of it. I know some people like to run Green Toe Breaker on their Ninos to get past defensive green mages. Well those Ninos aren't going to get past Daedra. The other awesome thing about it is the effective against dragon tag. Dragons always got these ninja buffs throughout the months without actually receiving an actual skill. Two great examples are Deltia's Tome and Brave Ike's Steady Breath. But yeah, Divine Naga counters dragons only buff which is fortified dragons and ultimately completely counters the entire class. 
Assist is Art and Sacrifice. It doesn't fit her kit. I've never played Genealogy, so I don't know if she was a healer or something in that game. But replace this skill with a dual rally skill or drawback. B skill is Quick Approach. This is great for slow heroes like Deirdre. However, I personally rather run the same color breaker skill rather than quicker post on high resistance mages. They both have their ups and downs, it's just my preference. With quicker post equipped, if an enemy is running green tone breaker, then Deirdre is in danger of getting one round KO'd. The pro is that she can ensure that she can take out high resistance blue mages, whereas green tone breaker might allow a blue mage to survive and put Deirdre in danger from Wings of Mercy. Green tone breaker makes sure that she can take out green mages and go neutral with other green tone breaker green mages. With the downside is that she won't guarantee a kill on high resistance blue mages during the enemy phase. She'll have to rely on one-shotting them. Because she comes with quicker post, you may as well use it. C scale speed ploy 3, similar to attack and defense ploy, it affects enemies with one lower resistance in all tiles in front, left, right, and below Daedra. Kinda like an infinite cross with Daedra in the center. Ploys are great for mages because they can send them back and debuff enemies from afar. Minus 5 speed can also help out in some green tone breaker matchups, but ultimately it will be used to use alongside a tanky unit with middling speed like Sager, Red Ike, Brave Ike, and many more. Overall, Daedra is essentially a Julia clone, she just has slightly less attack but is a lot better for tanking buffed up enemies. Unlike Julia though, Deirdre comes out of the box with a nearly fully viable skill set. You just have to fill in the rest of the slots and replace Art and Sacrifice. The best boons for her are attack and resistance. More attack ensures that she can one shot blue mages on the enemy phase with a green tone breaker set and more resistance for soaking up more magical damage. The best bane is defense. 16 defense is already very low and she doesn't have good speed so any extra defense is kind of useless. If you don't have Julia, Sonya, or even Soren, then she's great to pick up as a defensive unit to counter blue and other green mages. Also, you can also consider summoning for her if you struggle against Dragon Emblem teams. Alright, my personal ranking of this bandit is probably different from yours. Tao to you is number 3 for sure, she's just a generic blue mage, nothing really special about her, still a solid unit though. I would actually put Deirdre above Sagerd. Sagerd is solid and a powerful red cavalier, but I value green mages very highly solely because of the meta. As you guys may know from your own experiences, in Arena Assault there's almost a Reinhardt on every single round and the easiest way to get rid of them is to bait them with a green mage. Deirdre is perfect for that and you can never have too many Reinhardt checks. She can also counter dragon team so that's a plus. But my ranking aside, all three of these units are worth summoning for, it's just the matter of which one do you need. Other things I want to talk about, the Dancer Banner is still available, if you haven't got any of the Dancers yet, I'd recommend summoning in that banner instead of this one. Dancers will always be useful, more Dancers the better, they make Arena Assault so much easier. If you summon all the Dancers and aren't interested in this banner, then save your ores because we might be getting a Halloween banner soon, and there's always Christmas and New Year's in December. I'm actually trying my hardest to save my ores for the first anniversary of Fire Emblem Heroes in February because gacha games always have something really cool for the first anniversary. I want to make sure I have tons of ores for whatever banner they will release for that day so I don't have to spend any moolah. That's all for this video. If you haven't already, follow my Twitter and join my Discord. Links are in the description. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.